long while back, I did a review of a game called Land of Enki, done by Enki and Games. And I've been in contact with the developer of the game for a while on social media, mostly Twitter. And the developer at one point was working on a game called Ender Story Chapter 1, which is a turn-based RPG inspired by early Final Fantasy and Dragon Quest games. Now, this game is based off of an original version that was pretty much like a Flash version. But this version of the game is completely redone with more added to it. Now, I know I don't do a lot of RPG-type videos on my channel, and I get a lot of people asking, Hey, when are you going to do a review of Final Fantasy VII? Hey, when are you going to do a review of the Dragon Quest series or Dragon Warrior, whatever the hell you want to call it? When are you going to do a review of Pokemon? When are you going to do Skyrim, Deus Ex, and all of these other types of RPGs out there? Eventually it'll happen. And mostly it's a time thing, because a lot of RPG games are very long. But I eventually want to review more RPGs out there of a different variety of subgenres, and possibly even do a Let's Play of them. It's not that I hate RPGs or anything. Granted, at one point in my life I did, but the more I got older, the more I've been open to playing any game out there. Ender Story Chapter 1 was released in 2017 for PC, and you can find it on itch.io, and you can pay a dollar for it, or more if you like to. If you don't want to go that route, you can get it on Steam for 99 cents, so pretty much one dollar there as well. Now, the reason for Episode 1 is because this game will be multiple episodes. Matter of fact, it says on the Steam page that the developer plans to finish the series as a solo developer as his programmer quit near the end of Chapter 2. So I'm guessing Chapter 2 is already done, or close to being done, and I'm guessing he's just finished up some shit here and there. Now the backstory of the game has you play in a handful of different characters, kind of like your normal turn-based RPG. Now granted, there is just one character you move around as, but when you're fighting and all of that, there's multiple characters. Now the main character you play as is Iron Solhart, a young knight in training, and he's training to kick some ass and protect the kingdom of Edera. Soulheart has a new role as a border guard, but makes a big fucking mistake when armed mercenaries force their way into the kingdom on his watch. What a lame asshole. I mean, come on, it's your first fucking day and you let a bunch of mercenaries come in? You should have done your job, instead of messing around. So now it's a race against time, and you must journey your way with ranking officer Gradden, not Gruden, because if this was John Gruden, he probably would have told Soulheart what kind of a piece of shit he is. Hey, I'm not gonna be a real patient guy now. You know what? You're like my wife when you get in space. You just get lost. Are you out of your mind? Are you out of your skull? It's always the same two guys. Do it again. Do it again. And you must stop the mercenaries from reaching King Heron. Throughout the world, you will travel through fighting a variety of monsters, aid citizens, and try to be the hero. Because the world needs a hero. Because a world without heroes means Gene Simmons would probably sing that fucking shitty song again. And have one single tear go down his cheek. World without Nothing to do. It's no place for me. What a pussy. As you can see in the gameplay, it has that classic turn-based style to it, which is influenced by many classic games in the past. You will go around exploring a variety of places, getting in battles to get your character stronger so you can defeat tougher enemies. And not only that, there are a shitload of skills and abilities to kick the enemy's asses and over a hundred pieces of equipment that will have various effects and elements to experiment with. You can go to stores and buy better weapons and so on to make your character stronger. For a game like this, made by one or two people, a lot of time and effort does go into it and it's nice to see that now you're probably looking at ender story and thinking this looks like something that was made in rpg maker well it is matter of fact it's on the rpg maker website you can download it there or actually it gives you a link to the itch.io page and it uses the rpg maker mv engine for this game now there's a shitload of rpg maker games out there some are free some are on steam and so on i have probably a few hundred of them downloaded that are from sites like game jolt itch.io and other places some are interesting some are ridiculous and some are just plain awful but this one i can't really call it awful i know some people say well anybody that makes rpg maker games are just losers blah 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 it's kind of like unity a lot of people shit on these little tiny developers or one man developers that are making freeware games as fakes and posers because they're using unity well you got to start somewhere and if you're going to be a one man development team or two people working on it rpg maker isn't a bad thing as long as you're not charging 40 bucks for the damn game it's all about effort and how much time you want to put into the development of the game the 
The graphics for Ender Story are great. I like the design of the game. The sprites are nice. The design of the characters, the enemies, and so on are great. For a game using RPG Maker, there's a lot of detail here. And even when you're in battle mode, the enemies look great. The game doesn't glitch. I did run into some slight slowdown here and there. But other than that, the game is definitely playable. It doesn't hurt the game for me at all. And it's really not a drastic slowdown, just here and there. And I really can't say that it hurts the game or anything like that. The music is damn good, and it's an original soundtrack. Now, granted, some of these RPG Maker games out there, at least the ones that are free, will just rip music from other games, ranging from retro games and so on. Obviously, for a game that is for sale, you either use royalty-free music or make your own. And in this case, it's an original soundtrack, and I enjoy it a lot. At times, it's almost a bit relaxing, but when you are in battle, it's upbeat and kicks ass. The sound effects are good, too. Nothing to complain about at all. The controls are very simple. Now, I play these RPG Maker games with a keyboard and Z and X for everything else. Navigating around the menus and so on, you use the X key, or at least to open the menus, and then you hit Z to choose whatever. And, of course, to attack while in battle, you hit Z. To interact with people and so on outside of battle, you hit Z. The controls are simple to understand, responsive, and work very well. Ender Story Episode 1 is quite enjoyable. I really like it. I find the game to be straightforward and very well done. There's nothing wrong with RPG games like this that stray off path and have you doing about 50 other things and so on, but this one stays focused to the main story. There is like a few smaller side missions, I guess you could call them, where you help out other people, and technically that kind of helps into the story, but it definitely fits that old school turn-based RPG style, and I like that. The graphics are great, the music is badass, the controls are simple. The only thing I wish, the length of the game. Most RPGs are multiple hours. Some can be 40 to 50 hours. This one is about three or four hours long. And it actually took me about five hours to get through it, but that's just me. I think at least eight to ten hours would have been nice, but I kind of understand why the game is only three to four hours long. This is in episode form. You don't want to ruin the story in the first episode. That'd be ridiculous. The other flaw of this game, and these are slight flaws. I should repeat that. These are slight flaws that I ran into. The slowdowns. It was just a little bit annoying, but once again, it's a slight slowdown. It doesn't affect the game that much, but it's still enough to say it's a flaw. At the end of the day, though, I really like this game, and if you like turn-based RPGs, I think you should check out Ender Story. Like I said at the beginning of the review, the game is 99 cents. You can pick it up on Steam or itch.io. Now, Enki and Games has a few other games out there. Obviously, I reviewed Land of Enki, and then there's the sequel to that, Land of Enki 2, that I should actually review one day, but I also want to do a complete playthrough of the first game, and I think Enki and Games has a few others out there as well, but I can't remember the names of them at this time. I want to thank the developer, Jordan, for a allowing me to review his game. I think he did a damn good job on it, and I can't wait to see more of Ender's story later on with other episodes, and, and of course, whatever else he has planned. You can follow Enkian Games on Twitter, and the Twitter name is Enkian Games, so at Enkian Games. Well, that is it for this review of Ender's story episode one. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching.